Located at the edge of the water in Baltimore's Inner Harbor, the Baltimore Museum of Industry was once the Platte Oyster Cannery. We visited the museum to learn about the history of the Baltimore garment industry, which employed over 20% of the city's workers in the early 20th century. First of all, let me introduce myself to you. My name is Ed Hawkins. I am a uh, teacher here at the Baltimore Museum of Industry. Been working here for the last 12 years, trying to uh, bring up the idea of what the garment business was like here maybe 100 years ago. What we have here is a typical clothing company, typical of about 1920. When I was 16, uh, I worked in my father's garment uh, business as a spreader. And I did the same thing that the next year during the summer vacations when I was 17. And I really have to tell you this, I hated every minute of it because it was a, it was a tough, tough job. This machine right here is called a spreading machine. It has a track that runs the entire length of the table, which most likely would be about 90 feet. And I would have a work order. And my work order says I have to go upstairs to our uh, warehouse and get some bolts of material that happens to have a, it's a blue wool that has a red square stripe in it in this case, and it would have a lot number on here, like one, two, three, four. And I'd find that material up in the uh, warehouse. I'd bring it down, and I would put it on here, and then I would pull it out, and so I could have it laying here very flat. And I would take a tailor's weight, which was about eight pounds, and I'd put it right on that spot right there. And then I would take my spreading machine and travel the entire length of the table, you'll have to use your imagination now, all the way down, 90 feet away, till I got to the end. And then I would put a brass bar across it, like this. The material would then fold over, and then I'd go all the way back again. Oh, I did not like that job too much. It wasn't a nice place to work in the clothing business, because, for instance, let me explain to you about the ladies here. Um, you can see the sewing machines, as I said in the beginning, they would not be on the same floor as the cutters. And they would be working upstairs or even downstairs, and they were being paid by each piece that they do. Not necessarily like an assembly line. For instance, each piece, each lady would have a specific job uh, such as this lady right here, she might just do nothing but lady sleeves. The other one might do another sleeve, but they, it's not things that are passed back and forth like that. If you brought your lunch to work in a paper bag and you left it on the shelf of the lunchroom, chances are by the time you got to eat lunch at around 12 o'clock or whenever you were able to, the food would be gone because the rats were prevalent. They were all over the building. You just would kick them out of the way. I did that many times, but the ladies, uh, they, it, they didn't like that too much. And so you had, it was necessary that you had to bring your lunch to work in a lunchbox or a pail. In 1920, uh, the, uh, the people of Baltimore, they, they, they started inspections of these clothing pieces. And um, they found out that some of the conditions were really, really pretty horrible. Uh, in some of the shops, some of the, the sweatshops downtown Baltimore, uh, these women would come in and work all night, and they would actually lock the doors to keep these ladies in there. And if you remember back, uh, way back in, uh, in New York, in the Triangle Shirt Company fire, I think there was about 143 people were trapped in that building because they said all the doors were locked but one. They couldn't use the elevators, and they were jumping out the windows, and uh, from that time on, most of that changed as far as locking the doors for the garment business. We do between 150 and 300 children a day here on field trips, and uh, they have no idea about dates. They have no idea where it started from, so we try to bring them into the, the real world and say, yeah, there were people working here making clothes to fit you guys so that mom and dad who were working and didn't have time to make clothes could go out and buy clothes for you. 
And I found out that you really don't grow too old too quickly when you're working with children. And I love every minute of it. You can watch all of the over 100 American Artifacts programs online by visiting cspan.org. Type American Artifacts in the search engine and browse the topics.